So check it out. Me and my short little self. I've got my Kawasaki KLX 250 right here. And then I've got this bad boy that we're working on. He's a Yamaha XT 200. Now, I know they've got the newer, what is it, the XT 250, but uh, I need to get a battery for this and I need to redo a gasket on my case right there. Right here. But we're gonna we're gonna get this thing going. I had it going, it runs. Um, it's just it has a hard time staying running. So from what I understand, uh, they take a battery. There's currently no battery. Um, it basically, yeah, I've heard that it's hard to start without a battery. So I'm gonna get a battery, and then I'm gonna check the compression and redo this gasket. And hopefully, we'll be out riding this thing this summer along with this. Now, I might take that, I might take this. Um, but today's video is basically, we're gonna talk about mods for this bike, okay? Now, obviously, I, I made another video about the mods and you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't even remember what I talked about in that thing, but we're doing an updated video on the mods, specifically the top three mods that I personally have done to this bike kit. Now, the order that I did them in, um, it worked for me. However, I should have done the third mod way sooner than I had. Now, obviously, first mod, I don't know if you can see, but obviously this is not a stock seat. It's stock, but shape. Now, I'm not one to, you know, clean shave my face with a razor, for that matter. But I did a damn good job on shaving this seat here. So, anyways, that was my number one mod. Because this has, uh, I believe, a 35-inch seat height. Now, my little legs, I'm really only sitting about maybe 32, 30, 32 inch inseam. I don't know. 32s are a little baggy as far as pants go. So I'm going to guess around like 30. But right now, this is sitting about 33 and it is, it's comfortable-ish. Um, I I don't want to get the lower end link just yet. I'm going to, but I'm going to hold off. Now, obviously, second mod that I had done to this bike would be these cheapo handguns. Now, literally, I went to Amazon and purchased the cheapest handguards I could find. Now, I'll throw a little clip in here. We'll get you a little close up of these handguards. Um, I have. I have beat them pretty good. A lot of falls, a lot of rocks, snow. Um, most of my falls were, I don't know, on the rocks. And uh, it helped them pretty good. Other than, I mean, this one's a little loose right now. And another thing I want to point out, basically, is on the install, I, I screwed up. Yeah, I mean, my, my brake lever, the, the, the cord here, now, Right here, when I push down on the suspension, it kinks. I don't know if you can see that from here, but anyways, it kinks on me. Well, when I installed these handguards, I wasn't paying attention, and I basically kind of kept it so that my wiring here was smushed. And speaking of, I need to kind of move it because I got some other wires here for my horn squishing. But uh, this, this is supposed to kind of free, and, and I hooked one of my GoPro mounts to here, and I kind of squished it as well. So for a little while there, when I would pull this front brake, you know, I'm, I'm trying to slow down, and then I, I release the brake. Um, it didn't want to release because it was kinked, so the fluid was still, it wasn't 
push them back. And so my brakes would lock up. Now, after reviewing some footage of uh, some past videos, I believe those were a lot of my crashes because they were a lot of them came from my front end. Um, and then afterwards, uh, the last kind of crash, I basically decided that there was a ghost or something that, you know, I was coming down a hill and basically there was like a ghost that was preventing me from moving forward. And I turfed it on the slick rock and it hurt. It was bad. I mean, I went, ah, that hurt. Falling on rock really hurts. But anyways, so I need to fix that and make it so my break is a little more free, you know, flowing. Um, but other than that, my seat, my hand guards, and the number three top modification that I would do to this bike if I was anybody. Now, I don't care if you're hauling around, like, I don't know, I guess I'll do another video on the top speed, but the sprockets. You gotta change the sprockets. Now, don't get me wrong, if you are buying this for like a commuter bike, street bike, more street versus off-road, it is a dual sport, you can keep the gearing. I mean, it's wonderful for that. However, if you're gonna be using this bike primarily, I don't know, I mean the majority of the time, over 50% off-road, I would suggest changing the sprockets. Now, I read a few online videos, well, I didn't read, I, I watched a few YouTube videos, thanks for all those who are putting those videos out, so I'm putting this out. But, 13 tooth front sprocket, super easy to change, um, doesn't require you to change your chain. Um, I noticed a slight difference with changing the front sprocket, but I don't know if it was as big as some of these other YouTube videos were claiming like, whoa, it was excellent. But it was noticeable. Um, but as soon as I changed that rear sprocket and got a new chain, by the way, uh, stock is 42 in the rear and 14 in the front. Now, I put a 13 on the front and I went with a 52 on the rear. And I basically had to order uh, what is it? It's a 520 chain by 110. So I had to up and buy a new chain, obviously. So front sprocket, rear, rear sprocket, and chain. And the chain length was 110 links. Perfect fit. Perfect fit. So if any of you do this project and need to buy a new chain, 110 is going to be that magic number for your links. Now, yeah, I mean, I've still got a video and a hill that I could not climb on this and I need to go back for round two because just a little bit I rode a little while ago on the Slick Rock in my last video. Um, dude, it made a huge difference. Now, first gear, even shifting into second gear, um, I'm going to go do some trail riding and find out if it's going to work for me better. Now, I'm pretty sure that's the, that's, that's the sweet spot for these bikes. Now, obviously, you can go a little lower. I can, I can definitely put a bigger sprocket on. I think the biggest they had was, uh, I bought my parts from Rocky Mountain ATV, but uh, these, I think they had rear sprocket. I think you could go up to a 52, so I mean, if I really wanted to, I could try out a 52, let you guys know how that goes. Because here's the deal. I like to ride this thing, but I also like to play around, jump, you know, little objects, just climb stuff, little hills, rocks. Um, I've seen some pretty good single track trails. They look pretty gnarly. And honestly, dude, I'd be afraid to do that with the stock gearing on this bike. Seriously. like. You wouldn't catch me up there on a stock KLX 250 on some of those trails. So I'm feeling a lot more comfortable visiting those trails with this gearing that I have now. But that's it. I mean, 
The top modifications I've done to this bike are the seat, shaved the seat, handguards, cheap set of handguards by the way, and the gearing, the front and rear sprocket. I'm just going to include that in one modification, the gearing. Now, I've heard people talk about the EJK fuel tuner and the desmogging and stuff like that. Now, I did take off my airbox lid. I was told not to do it until I get the, the tuner. Uh, I did it anyways. I, I'm a curious fella, and I like to try things out. So I tried it. And honestly, ah, I'm going to leave it off. Um, I might pull a spark plug here in a little while, just kind of check it, see how it's running. But other than that, I will eventually end up getting the EJK controller and the desmog. I'm going to desmog it. But basically, that just shaves some weight. I think that will help. Man. Maybe I'll tease canisters here. I don't know how much weight there is, but there might be a few objects on this bike that I could probably take off weight-wise. But, I don't know. That's that. This is a fun bike, man. I am really glad I bought this bike. Now, I'm also excited to go test this bad boy out on some trails. I had a lot of fun with this thing back when I was a little kid. Uh, it's I, I'm not comfortable on that bike. That seat height is way different than this seat height. Yeah. So, anyways, in the future, I might also get a skid plate because where we were at riding in the last video, I found myself hitting some stuff that made me worry about the bike a little bit. So, anyways, that's that. This is an easy video, simple video. Let me know what you guys want to see with this bike. I've got a few requests for a top speed video now that I have the gearing changed on it, which is coming soon. I will try to do that one within the next couple days. I've got some time. It doesn't look like it's going to be snowing, so I'll probably have some time to go out and film some more videos. In fact, I think i got a whole other week of good weather to go ride. Yeah. So, um... That's it. I'm going to end it here. And any questions, leave them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We might do, be doing a contest here soon. All right. Check this out. You can see these, these handguards here have a little bit of wear. I'm with my bike here. Got some, got some scratches on the bike. But I tend to... Fall down on this side a little bit more. You see the the scuffs on this bad boy, and obviously this handle I uh, I broke off. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna get some new mirrors too. Look at those things; <laughs> they're so scratched up. Uh, oh man, yeah. I think I'm gonna get rid of these and buy some new ones that uh, go up under right here. Um, I think I'm gonna do that. Forgive me, forgive me for all this mess here. Um, this, this shop is going to be my new toy shop. So I was debating on parking the CTSV out here. Um, I got some spot. I, I got a spot in my garage for the CTSV right now. There's some puppies in there though. They're going to be gone soon, but I've got this little 5150 kicker right here. I don't know if any of you guys remember these things. These were popular way back in the day. They like... All of a sudden started making them and just everyone had them. But I had a client who owed me some money and uh, yeah, he wanted to uh, trade this bike. I think I paid a little too much on the trade work for this bike, but it is what it is. And we are currently in the process of putting it back together as these forks were bent, had a little crash on it. it wasn't me, by the way. 